Hi, my name's David, and I'd love to welcome you to this um, short overview of Scrivener. This is a, a video that's hopefully going to help you just get started with Scrivener and take away some of the mystery that surrounds it. I want to right now at the outset just encourage you that um, although Scrivener sometimes okay can look a little complicated, once you become familiar with it, it is surprisingly easy to use. So let's first familiarize ourselves with the Scrivener dashboard. When you first open a Scrivener project, you'll choose what template you want to use, um, and then it will open up a dashboard similar to this. Okay, now you can open and close various uh, parts of this dashboard. You can make it as simple or as cluttered as you want to. Okay, so don't be overwhelmed already. Um, most of any element of this can be removed from sight and brought back into sight um, just as you please. But um, I've got everything here showing so we can just walk through each part. Up at the top you've got the toolbar. These are your most often used tools. Uh, you do have liberty within Scrivener to choose which tool show here but the default bar tends to work well for most people. Underneath that you've got a formatting bar. Uh, this would be again very familiar to uh, anyone who's used any desktop publishing or word processing program like Word for example. Um, just to, where you can format your actual text within a document. Over on the right hand side you've got the inspector. You can open and close this. The inspector is a place where you can hold all sorts of information concerning the documents or folders within your project okay and there's a lot that goes on here um, that we will look at a little bit later. You've got the content area okay now that's uh, just plain and simple where you actually do your writing and then over here on the left hand side you've got the binder. Now think of this as I guess in the physical sense a three ring binder. So this would be where you uh, basically collect together in one place all the things that pertain to your project. And that's one of the most powerful things about Scrivener. You don't end up with folders and files scattered all over your hard drive. Scrivener is a complete writing and research environment where everything can be kept in one place. Your whole way of working will be utterly revolutionized once you understand how Scrivener and how the binder works. Adding files and folders to your project is very, very easy and very quick. Um, you can just use the big green button uh, up on your toolbar or uh, there are some similar buttons in the footer of the binder. But you can also import files from outside of Scrivener. So say for example you've got Word documents that you've worked with previously or you're working with other people who, create, uh, who work within Word you can actually import those and there's some very cool stuff that you can do when you import into Scrivener and so I'm just going to kind of uh, step aside right now and let myself take over and show you some of the ways in which you can import um, that I believe can save you a great deal of time if you're pulling in particularly from somewhere like Microsoft Word. Bringing Word documents in is super simple. You can literally just drag and drop it in there and Scrivener will convert that file. It will name the chapter according to the name of the document and then just drop the text in here. Okay, as you can see it's changed the word count here. Um, we can look at the word count of an individual document or of our complete project. So let me bring in chapter 2. Okay, again, I'm dropping it just into the draft folder. And again, we can see our word count for that individual document down here. And we can also see up here the word count for our complete uh, project. Okay, and the same for chapter three. Very, very simple. Okay, um, but let me just show you something else very quickly. Okay, let's just drop those in the trash. What if you've got the complete um, manuscript or the complete text of a book in just one document? Okay, so I've, uh, I'll just open up this document here. Okay, I've got the, this same book or certainly the first five or six chapters of this book in one long word document. Okay, this is chapter one, Prayer and Faith. 
Okay, and then down here, I've got chapter two, prayer and faith continued, and then we're down to chapter three, prayer and trust or whatever. Now, if you take a quick look, what I've done in front of each of the um, in front of each of the chapter names, I've put this little kind of hashtag um, symbol. OK, um, and I'll show you why in a moment. Let me just now um, come over here back into Scrivener. OK, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to import this file here. So if I go if I go import, OK, and I want to import and split. OK, so I'm going to import and split. I'm going to choose this file and basically it says split sections by finding separators in the text and it's got that little hashtag okay and I'm going to import now and basically what Scrivener is doing it's taken that file and if you look what it's done it's automatically split my document into its respective chapters and pulled in the name of that chapter right here. So we've now got our text into Scrivener, but once it's in, uh, there'll be th certainly things that we want to do with it, different styles that we want to add. Scrivener has always been very robust when it comes to actually formatting text. But I think Scrivener 3 is really taking it, taken it that step further and made it much easier and much simpler to apply styles to your writing. And so, you know, obviously we're very familiar with the formatting palette up here. So I can highlight text and do all sorts of different things with it according to uh, how I want the text to look and sit on the page. Um, but Scrivener also has styles within it, like preset styles that you can apply straight away. So, for example, I've got a quote here. I can just highlight it, come in here and choose block quote. OK, I could make this one, for example, a title or a heading. OK, and so it just uh, allows for very, very quick application of styling within a document. Um, but what if you want to create your own styles? Now, this is something that I really um, love in Scrivener. And so if I say, for example, highlight this text here and make it the style that I want. So let me say I want 14 point and I want it to be um, Helvetica. OK, so that would be it would. So just so it's very obvious what's uh, taking place here. I make it 14 point and I also give it a line height of 1.5. OK, so obviously we see the text is looking very, very different now. And what I can do is I can just highlight that now formatted text. I can come up to the format menu under the style menu and go new style from selection. Now, if I call this um, just awesome style. OK, I can choose whether to include the font family and the font size, etc. Um, either or or both. So and just click OK. That now becomes a style that turns up right here under my style menu. And I can then just choose any individual piece of text. Go to my style menu and apply my new style. There's also another very um, cool thing that you can do. Like, um, as you know, we're familiar with copying and pasting. So I could copy some text and then go elsewhere in a document and paste it somewhere else. But within Scrivener, you can also copy and paste styles. So let me select this piece of writing here. Again, we'll change it up. So I'll give it a different kind of font and I'll make it Oh, that's a little too big. OK, I'll make it a little bigger so it's very obvious. Now, if I highlight this again up in the format menu, I can copy the formatting. There are quick keys for this, um, but let me just use the menu for now. Copy that formatting. I can then go to any other piece of text anywhere within my document. And if I highlight the text, format and then paste the formatting, 
I can also set default formatting for any new document I add to my project. So I don't have to go in and actually apply any formatting to it. It will all, already, as soon as I create it, have the formatting that I want. To do that, I just come up into Scrivener Preferences. I choose the Editing tab here. And then under these various options within the Editing tab, I choose Formatting. And I can choose to use the formatting in my current editor or set up formatting within this box here. And it will then apply those styles to any new document that I add to my project. Okay, so that's just a few things that you can do with formatting within the new version of Scrivener version 3. There are also various ways in which you can view your documents within Scrivener. Um, there, there's the Scrivenings view, which basically just shows you the text of the selected documents. There's the corkboard view. This is a really powerful view in which you can get an overview of your project, um, see titles, synopsis, add labels, add um, status stamps. Corkboard view is just a really powerful way to work within your project and quickly build out a project. And there's also an outline view. In the outline view, you're able to um, see all sorts of different statistics about your um, project. And very, again, very quickly change elements like you can change section types here, change labels, all just from one pane rather than having to go to each individual document and make those changes in the inspector. Scrivener 3 also comes pre-packaged with something called layouts. Layouts are various ways in which you can view your documents within the Scrivener dashboard. This could be as a dual pane, a triple pane, or even multiple panes within the same dashboard. This allows you to say, for example, look at your research in one pane and continue to do your writing in the other without having to flick between screens. There may also be times when you want to view your project as it might look as a printed book. So you can set your page size and then use the show page view to get a preview of what the book might look like once it's actually on the printed page. I'm also a big fan of the full screen composition mode in Scrivener. If you're a person who loves to write distraction free, you can do so at the click of a button. When you press the full screen composition mode, everything else disappears, um, yet you still have very convenient access to all of the various files and folders within your project. And you can also pull up the inspector, change different aspects, change labels, statuses, uh, notes, etc., just by bringing your mouse down to the bottom of the screen. This is going to allow you to work in a completely distraction-free environment, but not lose the convenience of quick access to anything within your project. Now, as I mentioned earlier, um, one of the great things about Scrivener is that you keep everything in one place. So you, have all, you can have all of your research, all of the documents and various things that pertain to any given project right there within um, one in one Scrivener project. You don't have to have um, folders on your hard drive with images in, another folder with kind of your notes in, another with your writing documents or your text files. You can have everything right here within Scrivener. And bringing different items into Scrivener is so, so easy. We've already looked at um, bringing a Word document in, so I can just drag this across. Let's say that these were some of my research files. I've got here an audio file, a movie file, a PDF, just a picture, a JPEG, some plain text, some rich text, and a Word file. I can literally just drag them and drop them into my research folder. Every uh, Scrivener uh, project that you open will have a research folder in here by default. Um, let me just bring in this PDF so you can see it bring in a PDF. And the great thing is you can view it right within the Scrivener folder, even an audio file. So if I bring this audio file in, I can actually listen to it within the Scrivener project itself. 
Now you imagine that could be transcription, it could be just even audio notes that you've taken and you can bring them directly in. The same is true of movie files. Let me just bring a little movie file in and again, you can just watch it directly within the Scrivener project. No problem at all. Picture files, um, obviously uh, many, many people would use pictures within their projects plain text and each one comes in and each kind of file also has its own particular icon so you're able to see okay this is a text um, just at a glance you're able to see this is a text file here's a picture file a movie an audio a pdf a word file if i add a blank document here you can see that a blank document has no text on it, but as soon as I put text on it, the icon has a little text areas on it. I can nest documents within one another and it becomes a little pile of documents like this. So there are so many ways in which Scrivener helps you to um, quickly get an overview of what's in your folders and in your files. And as you can see, with the research folder, you can pull absolutely anything in there and have it right there at hand when you need to look at it. You can even bring in entire web pages. So if I choose my research folder here and come up and go to file import web page, I can just put in a web address. I've got one here pre-populated and just go OK. Scrivener will go out online and I can view it directly within the Scrivener project. As you can see, it's pulled in that complete article from my website in the author right here within Scrivener. Immediately you can see how useful this could be. So you don't have to keep going from browser back to your program to write back to the browser. You can have it all here. You can even go split screen and have your text in one pane and your research files in another. Alongside this, Scrivener 3 has also added something called bookmarks. And bookmarks are really useful because they allow you to kind of connect and attach documents to individual um, files or documents or folders within your Scrivener project. So let's say this chapter here, there were certain research files that I wanted to be available to me anytime I was working on this document. Let's say this PDF were um, something that I want to connect to this file. I can just select it and drag it and drop it into my bookmarks and it will appear right here in the, in the inspector when I look at my bookmarks. I can use any kind of, um, I, I could say, for example, bring over this audio file. That may be something that I recorded on my phone, brought into my Scrivener project, and I can listen to it right here. It may be a transcription file, and I could type in this window. Now, the great thing is that this is not necessarily something that's connected to every single Thing in my project, although I could if I wanted to, they're only connected to the document that I bookmark them with. You can bring anything into here, so you can add internal bookmarks like we have. So I could just connect two different um, chapters or two different scenes, whatever it may be. I can add an external bookmark, which will allow me to add a URL studythebiblenow.com, one of my websites. And I can then load that page and it will load the page up within my bookmarks or I can even add an external file bookmark. Okay, so there are numerous ways in which you can use bookmarks or your research folder to keep files within your Scrivener project right at your fingertips without having to kind of zip around to browser, from browser to folder to desktop or wherever it may be. Everything is right here at your fingertip. We're now going to look at the newly updated compiler and Scrivener have just blown things out of the water with this one. I mean, it really is such a huge improvement on the previous version and a lot easier to work with. 
Now, when you first see it, uh, you may be a little like me and kind of back off and think, wow, this actually looks quite complicated. Um, but once you actually understand, again, like most things in Scrivener, once you actually understand how it works, it is dead simple and just really produces some great results. Now, um, we're going to just in these in this short introduction, OK, in this quick start video guide, I just want to show you the very basics in the main training. Um, we go into a much greater depth working with some of the different templates. But for the sake of this simple walkthrough, I'm not going to confuse you. I'm just going to do um, some of the simplest compiles that we can. And yet you'll see uh, just how easy, quick and what a great result you can get without really knowing much about how it works at all. This is the compile button. So if I compile this right now, OK, it's going to bring up this screen here. Over here on the left, OK, you've got various preset formats that you can use and you can create your formats of your own and um, I, I show how to do that in the training in a much greater depth and it's very well worth knowing how to because you can make some really cool stuff happen when you do so but we're going to actually here choose to do a kindle book i'm going to stay with the default layout here and all you need to know is um, that each chapter or each document within your uh, Scrivener project is going to be given a section type. Now the section type of the documents that I've chosen to include in this compile are simply called section. Now here in the middle you can see that any section type called section is just going to show the main text. Okay but I actually want to pull the, um, the name OK, of the chapter, I want to actually have my chapter names placed in the final compile, followed by the text. So I'm going to choose here assign section layouts. I'm going to choose section because that's the section type that I'm working with. And what I want to do basically is add this. I want a section break with the section title showing and then the main text of that document. That's that's uh, what I'm going to choose for that. The look of my section type. And now you can see that any section type called section is going to pull the title from the name of the document and then have the main text of that title. I can choose any image file from that's held within my Scrivener project and mark it as my cover. So I've created a cover. OK, and I've added that now. And let's compile this and we'll see how it looks once it opens up in Kindle. And so as you can see, we now have a Kindle, perfect Kindle uh, file, Mobi file with the cover. It's got a clickable table of contents. OK, it's pulling the titles from the name of the document within our Scrivener project, putting the text of that document as the text of the chapter. It's placing a break between chapters. And that is a perfect Kindle ready document that you could upload to KDP and begin selling in the Amazon store tomorrow. So we've seen an example of how quickly and easily we can create a Kindle ready book using Scrivener just straight out of the box with very little kind of messing around, certainly no rocket science. Let's now do a print book. OK, so we're going to use a different template this time. I'm using the novel template. It's a little more complicated and um, a great deal more powerful. Uh, again, this is something I go into in more detail in the actual training. But basically, it's uh, I mean, it's not that complex, really. You've got a, a folder for each chapter. OK, I like to name my chapters, but you may just have chapter one, two, three, etc. here. And then within each folder, I have a document with the text of that folder. Some of the chapters are simply made up of scenes. Now, all of these will be collated together when I uh, compile the book. Let me quickly show you one more thing as well. 
I have some other folders here in the novel template, but the one that I want to bring to your attention is called Front Matter. Front Matter allows you to add certain things to the front of your book, okay, for different uses. So we've got, if you were sending out a manuscript, um, putting together a paperback or an ebook, and you can change in the compile, you can change which of these you include. We will include some uh, our paperback here, okay, our paperback front matter. So let me click compile. Down here is where you choose what you want to add. So I'm going to add front matter and then choose the paperback um, items. And you can see that they now appear in my list of documents and folders that will be compiled. Now, in our previous example, we just had a very basic setup, but this time we've got uh, various layouts. I'm going to choose paperback as my preset format here. And um, we can see that the the pages that I've got a front matter section type, I'm just going to show as is. Okay, so you're going to have a page break and then just the text as it stands from those items, uh, from those documents. We then have chapter heading. Now, chapter heading, this is a chat. If I click this, it will highlight for me which items are going to be formatted this way. So chapter heading, okay, it's going to put a page break and simply put the number one, two, three, four, five, six at the beginning of that chapter. We then have scenes, okay, and scene section types are just going to show the text of the document. I don't just want a number. I actually want, I like my chapters to be titled. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to choose chapter heading. And what I want is to choose chapter one and then the section title. That's how I would like it to look. I want it to create a chapter with a number and then take the title from the document name. OK, so I'm going to choose that and we can see that that's reflected here. So I choose PDF up here and then I will compile this. OK, and we'll open it directly so we can take a look once it is produced. You can see how quickly and easily that took place. Now let's take a look. It's pulled in the name of the book, the title of the author. These are our front matter pages. Obviously, you would have other things in there. And then as you can see here, just as I specified, it's pulled in the chapter, the number of that chapter. And then from the uh, document title, it's pulled in the title. OK, it's also pulling in the author name and the title of the book and placing those on the pages too at the he in the header. You can change the font and the size of this and the where that where it actually sits on the page very very easily from within Scrivener um, when you set things up in your compile. Again, that's something that we go into in more detail in the main training. So as you can see, we've got a perfectly formatted PDF that you could upload today to KDP Print or to CreateSpace or any other print-on-demand service. And Scrivener allowed me to do that without changing all sorts of different settings. It really was just working with a preset, changing a, a, a couple of things just to make things just the way I wanted them to look. And here it is ready to upload. Now, as you can appreciate, we've only just been able to scratch the surface in this short introduction, this quick start guide. Hopefully it's taken a little of the mystery out of Scrivener for you and maybe even opened your eyes to some of the ways in which Scrivener can help you accomplish the goals that you have for your own writing and publishing. I have a, um, a full course, a complete course on Scrivener 3 that's available. The course covers every aspect of Scrivener that you can imagine. As a student on the course, you'll get a, a very smiley welcome from myself. But as you can see, there are loads of modules. We've got covering the basics through to adding content, distraction-free writing, printing your project, okay, for various purposes, uh, working with files and folders in your Scrivener project, some really cool stuff in there about how to uh, kind of work with the files and folders in ways that will quicken your workflow and make things simpler for you. 
uh, different ways to view your project. Scrivener really comes with all sorts of customizable ways that will just fit your own way of working. Uh, some great stuff about the corkboard, compiling for digital and print. Okay, we go into much more depth there. Talk about how you can create your own presets within the compiler. Scrivener project templates. Another powerful feature of Scrivener are some of the great templates they come with. And I go into how you can customize those and then save your own project templates for future use too. Some things about formatting, how you can format your documents and create format presets, uh, working with the research folder, writer's helps, using images, customizing your workspace, tracking changes, taking snapshots, something that uh, snapshots are a great feature, actually something that you will definitely want to put to use. Uh, backing up your projects to make sure you don't lose anything. Uh, Scrivener actually has some great stuff in place already that makes sure that you don't lose uh, work that you've been working on. A few cherries on top, a module on uh, working with Scrivener if you're blogging. So going mobile with Scrivener, this is really just an introduction to the mobile app that goes along with Scrivener itself. Uh, it doesn't go into detail as to all of the features of the mobile app. That would be another course all of its own, I think. Um, but it will certainly get you started with it. We've then got the quick start guide and um, all of your bonuses, your templates, your cheat sheets and your backgrounds, etc. So um, that's a, just a little look inside the course itself. So um, we can take a look at some of the videos. You'll find the videos in there. Um, you'll be able to very quickly navigate around, find what you want. Like I say, I've deliberately kept things short and sweet. So you're able to use this not just as a, a learning resource, um, but also as a reference later on once you, you know, if you think, oh, right, I just really want to remind myself of how that works. You can do so without having to trawl through, you know, a, an hour long video. Uh, I've broken it down into bite sized pieces very, very deliberately. You can also uh, take your own notes within the course and your notes will be saved here. You can then export them as PDF should you want to. So it just allows you to um, really keep a record of what you're learning, note those things down and have them right at hand any time that you want to. So you can check out the Scrivener Unleashed V3 course um, just by using that. Click in the button down below. I would absolutely love to see you on the inside.